All right, so guys, this week we took a trip down to Mason and Junction, Texas for a little bow hunting and rifle hunting, and uh, it was just a blast. Uh, unfortunately, I kind of am not very smart, and I uh, didn't record half of the hunt uh, with sound. So we got uh, some good video with no sound, and all the video that I hoped would have sound, I had to delete because it just didn't make sense without sound. And so I'm going to do a little voiceover for it and uh, just add the good video that we've got. Some great pictures, some amazing scenery down there. Uh, that's the rock country, uh, almost to the hill country of Texas. Uh, just really beautiful scenery and amazing animals that we got to see along the way. It was just an amazing weekend with some good friends. Uh, we had a great trip. It was a long drive there, a long drive back. While hunting in Mason, we teamed up with the Wildlife Ranch. If you've never heard of them, it's a pretty great place. They have really affordable hunts to really expensive hunts, depending on what size animal and what kind of animal you're looking for. The cool thing about the Wildlife Ranch is the lodge is included in your hunt and completely free to stay. So if you go for a hunt, you go out, you can't find the animal you want, or you don't get the kill, you don't pay anything. You tip your guide and you go on. It's not an overly fancy place, but it's got everything you could possibly need to include a, a full kitchen, coffee maker, showers, bathrooms, beds, complete with linens, a community room, a poker room, and just an all-around place to hang out. Even outside, there's fire pits and grills, and just a great place to spend the evening after a long day of trekking through the rocky terrain. Before we began our hunt, the morning was wet and cold, so our guide took us down to a place called Fort Mason. Fort Mason was established in 1851 and was Robert E. Lee's last command post in the U.S. Army. Albert Sidney Johnson, John Bell Hood, and Edmund Kirby Smith also served here prior to their service during the Civil War. During the war, the Confederacy controlled the fort, but it remained virtually unmanned. Families often sought shelter and protection within its walls during frequent Indian raids. Today, visitors can explore the reproduction officer's quarters at the Fort Mason Museum.
Our guide then took us down the road to the historic Sequest House. In 1887, Reverend Thomas A. Broad began constructing a handsome two-story sandstone house north of Mason's Courthouse Square on Comanche Creek. In 1919, the property was sold to Swedish immigrant Oscar Sequist. As we hiked through the rocky terrain of Mason, Texas to find these rams, we had a blast. It was some work with all the rocks, the vegetation, the cactus, and the hilly terrain. It's definitely not what we were used to in West Texas, but man, was it worth it. Hey guys, we are up uh, this morning and uh, we're here in Kerrville. We got David Lee. He's guiding us this morning. Um, we're going to try to see some red deer and some axis. I didn't realize it, but my sound wasn't on yesterday, so uh, today we've got the sound on. But um, it's about a little after 7, before 7.30 this morning. We're out here pulling on to the first place and uh, let's see how it goes. During our hunt, we spotted a lot of different animals. There's black buck, gazelle, wildebeest, and even some emus and zebras as we went through these exotic game ranches in search of our kill.
After a couple of days of not getting within 400 yards of these elusive red deer, we finally had the opportunity to get close enough to dispatch. What are some of your favorite recipes for wild game? Leave those in the comment below. Drink more water.